Hi guys, today we're going to learn how to make a koi nobori or a koi fish flag for kodomo no hi or children's day in Japan. So to do this project today, we're going to need two pieces of paper, neither of them in your art portfolio because we're going to be cutting them up, plus something else to put down on your desk so that your marker does not go through if you're using a Sharpie because you don't wanna get your workspace all messy. So the first thing that we're going to do today is we're gonna make the body of the koi fish flag. So to make the body, we're gonna hold our paper horizontally so that it is wider. And we're gonna be starting with our pencil. For today, all we need is a pencil, but next week we're going to need our scissors, glue stick, and colors. Oh, we're also gonna need a black marker today depending on how far we get in this project. So to start, I wanna make the face of my koi fish flag. And because we're going to make it rounded um, so that it can fly, we're gonna be doing that a little bit differently. So starting at the top of my paper, I'm gonna make two rainbow curvy lines on either side of my paper for the koi fish mouth. Then I'm going to make two rainbow lines at the bottom of each of my rainbow lines. It's gonna be like kind of its cute cheeks. And then I'm going to do two circles for the eyes inside. And you can do the eyes however you want. I usually like to do them with another circle inside and then one more for the highlight and I'll color in this middle circle. Maybe I wanna make my koi fish a girl. So I'll add some cute eyelashes on the sides, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So however you wanna do the eyes, make them look nice and cute. Then we're going to do the scales of the koi fish. So to do this, we're gonna do a whole bunch of the letter U. So starting on one side of my paper, I'm gonna make a really big letter U, so big that at least two of my fingers can fit inside. U, 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 all the way to the other side. And this is gonna make the scales. Now, very important when I start the next row, I want my scales to still look right. So to do that, this top pointy part of the next row needs to touch the bottom of the last row. So you point to the bottom, 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 and then you go off to the side. And we're gonna continue the same pattern of making the scales the same way and the same size all the way to the back of our fish because this is the body of our koi fish. Now some of you might be thinking, hey, koi fish have tails. Where are the tails? Well, we're gonna do that next because for the tails, we want them to be streamers so they're all fluttery in the wind when we fly our flags. So I'm going to put this off to the side for now. And now I have my other page, again, held sideways so that it's wider. And I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna make a bunch of lines all the way across from one side of my paper to the other side of my paper. They do not have to be perfect. They don't have to be even, just the best you can. And these fluttery, pretty pieces are going to be the tail of my koi fish. We're gonna cut out along these lines when we're done. Okay, so I have about one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a good number to aim for. If you have a few more or a few less, it's not a big deal. Just about however many you're comfortable with. Okay, now I'm gonna put this off to the side too because this is my paper that I had down so I don't mess up my workspace. I'm gonna get my koi fish face back. And now I'm gonna go over all my lines with my black marker so that they show up when I'm flying my flag. So I'm gonna go over the mouth. I'm gonna go over my eyes. Other side of my mouth. If I don't hit my pencil lines exactly, it's not a big deal. Just doing the best I can. Remember, we always, always draw with pencil first so that we can erase it if we need to. It's okay to make a mistake. 
It's just annoying if you make a mistake in marker, you'd have to start all over again. If you make a mistake in pencil, you can just erase it and it'll be fine. Keep going, all your scales, all the way to the back. So we talked about how koi fish flags flown in Japan, the black stands for the dad, the red for the mom, and then there were other colors for the kids. For your koi fish flags, they do not have to be just one color. They could be any colors that you like. So I missed my pencil lines a few times and I'm not really a fan of how that looks. So I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm gonna erase any pencil lines that I can see just to clean it up. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. If you hit your pencil lines a little bit more neatly than I did, you can just go ahead and move on to the next step, which will be picking your colors. Now you'll notice we did not do the black lines on the tail pieces. Um, that's because we're cutting them out anyway. So we don't need black lines in order to make them stand out. They're just guidelines for us of where to cut. Okay. When you're all done and you're happy with the way it looks, you can start oh, one more piece there to color. So my favorite colors are blues and oranges. So I'm gonna pick out a color that I like and I'm gonna start coloring. Again, we do not ever spaghetti color because that's for babies and nobody here is a baby. Instead we ping pong color, nice and neat, side to side. I decided to do my koi fish face all one color, but you could make your face rainbow colored or just a few different colors or all one color. It's totally up to you. Any color you like best. For my scales, I like how they're all divided by my black marker into different sections. So I think for my scales, I'm gonna do them all different colors. But just for the face, I like it one color. But that's a personal preference. You can make yours any color that you want. I'm gonna take my colors, again, nice and neat. Try and stay inside your lines. You can be coloring this with crayons, markers, or colored pencils, whatever you want. But I do not recommend painting this because we're going to be cutting this out and gluing it together. And if yours is wet with paint, the glue is not gonna stick real well. So I would recommend just crayons, markers, or colored pencils, or oil pastels, whatever you've got lying around. Notice that I'm going back and forth between my colors. I'm not doing all the scales in a row one color. I like the way that looks better. If you wanna do certain rows of colors, you can. I also get bored of coloring just the same color all the time. So I like to go back and forth between colors, do a little of this color, do a little of that. However you feel like coloring is up to you. But again, I got all my favorite colors here. Bluish greens and oranges. I think they look really nice together. If you wanna do little patterns inside the scales too, like make your scales stripy or dotted, that's another option if you would like to do that. Totally up to you. As you're coloring, try not to leave any white spots. When we leave white spots in a picture, it tends to look like we forgot about a space and it doesn't look finished is not a very professional artist type look. So 
and you know you're done when you have no white spaces left in your fishy. Also, I would recommend trying to use a bunch of different colors because if you do your whole fishy, the entire thing one color, it might look a little boring. But it is your fishy and it's up to you. I'm going a little bit quickly here because I don't want to hold you guys up. But make sure you go slow, take your time, and stay inside the lines. That'll make your fishy look super nice. Almost done, just a few more scales to go. I think I'm going to do what I did for the face, for the back of my fishy. I think I'm going to make that all the same color as well. Okay, when I'm pretty much done with all the white spots, I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to go back to the tail, all the stripes for the tail. And these, you can also do anything you want. If you want to make polka dots, if you want to make stripes on them, if you want to do zigzags. Um, I tend to just like them all one color. So I'm going to use each of the colors that I used on my fishy so far. And I'm going to make each stripe have its own color. Again, ping pong coloring side to side, back and forth, nice and easy. That's one. When you're doing this, try not to color over the stripey lines you made. You still need to know where to cut. Let's see, four. Oh, it's getting a little bit dull. I'll do my best to finish with it. And 
same thing with our fish. We don't really want to leave a whole lot of blank areas on this. We want them nice and colorful. Six. Now, if you're feeling really ambitious, which means you're up for a challenge, you could do the other side colored as well. But I don't really have time for that right now, so I'm just gonna leave them white, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out my strips. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut along those lines I made. Again, nice and neat, careful. Try to stay on the lines. That's two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now I have all my strips. I'm gonna put them to the side for now and go back to my fishy. I'm gonna turn my fishy over to the side that I did not color on. And I'm gonna take my glue. You can use either liquid glue or glue stick. And I'm gonna put a good amount of glue in a line all across the bottom of my fishy. So not where the face is, very important. You don't want the tail coming out of his face. Put it at the back of the fishy where his tail is gonna be. Then, I'm going to take my strips and I'm also going to glue them so that they're facing down. Leave a little space, do another one. We don't want these facing up because we want them facing the same way our fishy is facing so that They show the same. Now I have an extra strip here. What I might actually do is move some of my strips down. That's the nice thing about glue stick. And I guess you can do it with liquid glue too. You can reposition them a little bit if you need to, to make space. To make sure you get all your strips down. Okay, so now I've got all my strips down. I'm going to put a line of glue down one side of my fishy, not the bottom, but the side. And I'm gonna roll it like a burrito and stick the glue side down. So like that, and I'm gonna press it all the way down, make sure it sticks really nice. And I have a koi fish with a super cute tail. All nice and ready for Children's Day. Now he doesn't have a handle, so there's two ways that we can do a handle if you would like to have something to pull it on. Um, one way is if you have a hole punch at home, and this is something that you might need an adult to help you with. But what you can do is take your hole punch and punch a hole on one side and then the other side. And then you can take some string, put it through the holes and tie it off so you have a handle to hold it. But that takes a hole punch and string and an adult. So that's not what I'm going to do. Instead, I'm gonna take this spare piece of paper that I had um, because I didn't wanna get my workspace dirty and I'm going to make another strip but this strip is not going to be a long strip because it doesn't need to be as long as the tails it's going to be a shorter strip so i'm going to draw a line again keeping my paper horizontal from top to bottom so it's a shorter strip give that a little bit of color 
If you had leftover paper from the fishy's tail, that's another thing that you could use to make this strip if you wanted to. Nice and colorful. Cut it off. Come back to our fishy. I'm gonna put some glue on one side of his face. Put the strip down. Turn him over, put some glue on the other side of his face. Put the strip down. Now with this, you wanna let this dry because right now it's still wet and if you pull on it, it's not going to end well. It's probably gonna tug right off. But when it's all dry, you can go out and fly your fishy, pulling it along beside you as you run. And there is your koi fish flag. I hope you had fun with this project and I'll see you next time.